for sale. This chart shows the relative likelihood of each phone on the standard IPA vowels diagram occurring in each of Wells' lexical sets. Apart from a few prominent examples like the schwa and the comma vowel, it's kind of hard to read this chart. Consequently, I decided to separate each keyword into its own graph. As an example, if I included every phone for every keyword, we would end up with a whole heap of charts like this that are really hard to read because most of the phones occur 0% of the time. That being, nobody ever uses a lot of these vowels as the trap vowel. Here's the trap chart showing only the phones that people use along the bottom. The near open front unrounded vowel is clearly the most common. After that, its close relatives, the open mid and open unrounded front vowels, are both over 15%. That shouldn't surprise anyone, but it may surprise some of you to find the schwa ranking so highly. The reason for that is due to dialects which slide the trap vowel. So rather than saying trap with a simple monophthong, they say it more like trap. The same thing is happening with people using the near close front vowel. They're not saying trip, rather they're using that vowel as part of a slide. The remaining phones are again misapproximations of or gradual steps away from the primary trap phone. In modern English for talk, to help us all understand one another across dialects, we represent the trap vowel with the rune ash. For the bath vowel, or bath vowel depending on how you say it, note that the vertical axis is now topping out under 25%. That's a result of the divide between speakers of different dialects in regards to how this vowel is pronounced. Again, the presence of the schwa and near close vowels are the result of slides. So the primary divide here is between those who are using a fully fronted vowel, the same as the trap vowel, or a central or back open vowel. Everything else can basically be put down to a misapproximation of one of those two major categories, whether they're saying beth, buff, both, or both. Note that these charts do not indicate vowel length. The father vowel exhibits a strong pull towards the open back vowel, with very few people still using the trap vowel to say father. The most extreme cases of this result in the father bother merger. It may be worth noting that almost everyone agrees that this vowel should be unrounded. The graph of the start vowel looks very similar to the father vowel, with the exception of the schwa turning up. As usual, this is the result of some accents sliding the vowel. Of all the historically rhotic vowels, this is the one that non-rhotic speakers are least likely to substitute the schwa for er in. Instead, they tend to drop the er entirely, making the start vowel identical to the father vowel. Consequently, using two runes for both of these vowels and starting both of them with arc limits opportunities for confusion. The far left bar on this chart represents those who do not have the foot strut split. Thus they say strut. Although turned V is the symbol Australia's Macquarie Dictionary uses for this vowel, most Australians are in fact more likely to pronounce it with the open near central vowel, turned A. In Ireland, it's not uncommon to find speakers using the unusual rounded form of the open mid central vowel in this word. Despite the diversity of phones used for the strut vowel, you can see how they cluster around the lower right hand quadrant of the IPA vowels diagram, thus putting it squarely within the domain of the rune arc. Given how it's usually a diphthong, we should expect to find two dominant phones for the price vowel, but we don't. 
So what's going on here? In hindsight, for the diphthongs, I probably should have separated the initial vowels from the target vowels, but having already made this chart, I'm not going to change it now. Anyway, it's quite clear that the near close front vowel is the target of this slide. As for where it commences, the usual diaphoneme for it would use the open front vowel. However, this chart would tend to suggest that the open central vowel would be the better candidate in light of global English usage. However, the presence of the three open front vowels does give this a slight tug towards favoring the use of ash over arc as the rune to begin this slide. This one could very much be debated and has the potential to become a sibboleth if we don't allow for both in runic writing. My own accent would favor the use of arc in this position. However, given that that rune is used for the start vowel rather unquestionably, and the comparative uncommonness of ash to arc, I am now thinking that for the updated touchstone, it would be better to use ash for the price vowel. Those with the price choice merger will probably object to this decision, but as we've said many times, there's a reason ash, arc, and ors all look so similar.